So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to measure the size of the bird's head and the idea is to get some measured body size. We set the calipers at the widest part of the skull, which is just behind the eye here. And we just get a measurement. This gives us a measurement of body size which we relate to condition of the birds. So it's 42.6 millimeters. Okay, that's the first step. First of all, you can see that these birds don't have any teeth at all. And that's one of the things we're interested in because one of the reasons birds don't have teeth, well, the evolutionary reasons, but one of the reasons we're interested in looking at them and Marita's study, Marita O'Connell's study, is to look at the lead levels in these birds. And you may say, why do they pick up lead? As you can see, they have no teeth, so they pick up little pebbles to grind their food down in a little gizzard. And they sometimes pick up lead pellets, which are for either from hunting or from shooting, and they grind them down in the gizzard and they get poison. So that's what we're interested in measuring in their blood as well. So we now measure the, the wing length of the bird. Now, these birds actually are what we call molting. They're losing all their feathers. You can see that that wing is extremely small. The bird cannot fly with those wings at all. There's no hide of foil at all present. Uh, each summer, around this time of the year, all swans and geese replace their feathers in a process called molting. And these birds are... Yeah, what is it? Changing feathers. Yeah. Uh, you can see these are new feathers just about to come. There's a little sheet here. Yeah. What happens, a little tip grows out like a plant and erupts out and grows and then the sheet falls back. And there are ten primary feathers here. And you can see there's in kind of a natural break there. Then you have the secondary feathers and the tertiary feathers here. All of which are vital for flying. And when you're flying in an aircraft, sometimes you see the little flipper flap moving back and forth. The function of that is to give the, the altitude and the movement up and down. And that's carried out by a little part of the feather up here. There's a little flipper, if you like, which is in fact our thumb, the evolutionary thumb, called the allula, this little bit here. And that moves back and forth to give direction in flight and, and, and when the birds are landing and taking off. Good aircraft are designed on these birds. Yeah. This pink feather we're particularly interested in. It's something that seems to be occurring on these birds and, and, and few other of the populations. So Marita's going to take a sample now and hopefully with her colleagues in microbiology at UCC, in particular Alan Dobson, we will try and identify if this is a fungus, a fungi, or a yeast, or whatever is actually causing it. It seems to have a bit of pink just along there. See these? See these here? See this one? I wonder if that's the fungi actually doing that. No? It seems like afterwards yeah. it, it tends to fade, but you, you're left yeah. with the kind of... So the tertials are very abraded. They're not pink, but they're very brilliant. I think that follows on after, does yeah, it? it does. I'm just taking it to maybe. Yeah. Bird blood is slightly different than our blood. It only lasts, what, 30 days? Before it replaces all of it, or half of it. Or it always takes 120 days. Thanks, Anya, that's great. No problem, no problem. Okay, so, swab again.